welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. I thought we could catch up on some of the new releases. There are so many gosh darn Valentine's Day releases. You would think it's a bigger holiday than it is. Is it? I don't know. I'm I'm like every year it comes around and I'm like, damn, <laughs> there's more than ever before. Uh, so lots of the releases we're going to be talking about are Valentine's Day. Technically, I've tried to film this video like three separate different times, but you know, it just never worked out all those other times. Like, man, it's been rough, but I am happy to say I'm feeling like a hundred times better. Even when I felt like I was on the up and up of getting sick, I realized now I was still sick then because I'm feeling so much better. And it's almost like this breath of like, oh my gosh, this is what feeling pretty normal feels like. And I'm just grateful. So um, yeah, thank you for all the well wishes. I really appreciate it, you guys. And let's, without any further ado, get into the new launches. Oh my gosh, I feel like I got really bright by moving over here with my lights. I'm like, really trying to figure out my background situation. That is like a big goal for me, hopefully after singles week to get sorted out because I, I don't know, it's just like boring drab looking. Like my wall isn't white, but something about how that translates on camera makes it look dingy and I hate it so much. Anyway, not what we're talking about today. I wanna to start off with one of the new things that just got kind of promoted and launched. Um, and this is the Smoky Nostalgia Collection from Kaleidos. This is going to be coming February 15th and I'm really excited. I should hopefully be getting this collection. So I will probably do a video on it, but I'm excited to see what's in there. There's some eyeshadow palettes, there's some blushes. It's all like 90s themed, lots of cool tones going on. And you know, I'm always excited to see what Kaleidos comes out with. So I'm excited for this one and to see how everything goes together. Um, and it'll be interesting. I feel like with this collection specifically, I'll probably like pieces of it as opposed to everything. Because just looking at the first quad we have there, it is like a smoky, what I consider like from 2008 or something. Like that would be the quad you would be using for sure. But I'm excited for a quad, like that's exciting. I love a smaller palette so I am excited I'd love to know your guys's thoughts and what you're hoping to see from that collection beyond that though seriously it is just non-stop Valentine's Day releases we have a couple different things from Colourpop but they did their secret admirer collection and this had a palette which I thought the palette was cute like it's pretty classic Valentine's Day I don't think there's anything too too special in it but I did like that they had some heart-shaped pans and the pans were actually heart-shaped like kind of cute could also be annoying putting them in your singles collection or something, but you know, I thought that was kind of cute. Um, I really though thought the blushes in this collection were exciting and I've spent a long time being like the ColourPop historian for 2021. And I went back and I looked at all the different launches from ColourPop because we always talk about how ColourPop has so many freaking launches. And I was like, you know what? Let's put it to the test. How many did they fucking have? How many were they doing a month? How many were they doing a week? When were they launching stuff? And it was actually quite interesting. And and, um, you know, gave me a little insight, but they came out with these blushes last year, I think, for their Valentine's Day collection, but there was only three of them, and this year they have six of them, so I think that's kind of cool. And as we get into the Valentine's Day releases, I mean, so much of it is themed around heart shapes and pink and red and sometimes purple. There's chocolate stuff, like, there's a lot of that going on. And I'm just not someone who like buys stuff specifically for, for Valentine's Day. And I love pink, but you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just not like excited to buy pink just cause it's Valentine's Day. I'm not like excited to do like a Valentine's Day look necessarily. Are you like that? Do you like doing like something heart shaped or like, are you actually wearing that out? Is this just like a weird thing on social media where we talk about this, but like, is anyone wearing that in real life? Like, I don't know. Anyway, one thing I can appreciate about the blushes, what I'm trying to say here is that when all is said and done, Valentine's Day is over. These heart-shaped blushes can still be cute. You know, they're, they're not so Valentine's Day themed that they wouldn't be cute otherwise. And that's something I try to look out for when I'm thinking about buying something that's themed for a particular holiday. Like, will I get use out of it later? Will I want to use this later? Or is this just inspiring and exciting in this moment? And once that date passes, it's going to be like, who cares about it? I'm trying to keep that in mind. And I feel like the shape of the heart goes for Valentine's Day, but I would be excited about a heart-shaped blush any time of year, you know? Like, I think that's like a fun thing. I like cute stuff like that. So anyway, I thought the blushes were cute. I liked the colors that they had. I really thought that was the most, you know, exciting part about that collection. But there's also another thing that's come out from ColourPop is the Rock Candy palette. And I swear to you, I thought this was the Smoke and Roses or whatever other pink palette that just came out from ColourPop was. I was like, man, they're really promoting that hard again. Uh, no, it's a different palette. It's hard to 
tell. I mean, this one's a little bit more neutral, but you know what? I'm looking at these swatches right now, and this looks like a collection they came out with at the beginning of last year, like the five pan ones. There's like one called Divine and Love, and I don't know. They look so similar. These little five pans, it's like the same color scheme, like a maroon one, a cool toned one, a taupey one, a bronze one. I'm not gonna lie, I think it's pretty, this one does have pressed glitters in it though, so I mean, I'm not gonna pick it up, um, but I, it's so interesting. I feel like last year, really, they launched so many of these large palettes and they were hitting us back to back like every month toward the end of the year. And I thought maybe they were releasing so many of those palettes because of holiday and because of like gifting and stuff. Like I think a big palette like that can be kind of a statement gift. And I don't know, I was, that's what I was thinking. But seeing one of these come out in, you know, the beginning of this year when there's kind of this lull, I'm like, oh no, that's just <laughs> what they're doing. I, it's not for a specific season like that. So I don't know. Do you guys like these big palettes? Do you like the smaller ones? I feel like I love smaller ones and I think that has been trendy, but ColourPop just does everything, right? Like they follow every trend and everything is a trend and there's really just something for everyone over there, isn't there? Anyway, kind of cute, but not gonna pick up, like not tempting enough. Next, I wanna talk about the Natasha Denona Mini Crush palette that came to Sephora. I believe it's already there. Like this has been a little bit, but it's definitely Valentine's Day themed. And I think this is okay. I saw that this has like a lot of repeat shades in it, which I thought was an interesting decision on Natasha Denona's part. I was not interested in this and I love the mini as you guys know that. I think the mini love that came out last year was better, like more interesting and I have that one. So if I was feeling inspired to do something Valentine's Day or pink, I would just reach into that. And I'm particularly pretty picky or try to be <laughs> with the five pans, the minis from Natasha Denona. Since you can't take out the shadows, I am buying it specifically for that color story. So if it's not that great or it's not something I think I'm gonna use, I'm not inspired by it. Like I know even though it's cute and little, like it's not gonna be a good buy for me. So I'm not gonna purchase that, but I am excited for the pastel palette that got, I'm assuming leaked. I don't see it anymore. So that sucks that it got leaked but um, yeah, we'll see. I'm excited to see that in more detail and like actually officially launched, so yeah. Next is a product that I think is just so stupid. Honestly, I just hate this. This is the Miss Dior Makeup Palette from Dior, and this honestly looks like a gift with purchase, and I'm shocked to say that it's $145 for that actual palette. This looks like you bought the perfume for $145, and for free, they gave you this little makeup palette that you're never gonna use. Um, I just can't believe that well one that someone would buy like I just think this is not even cute it looks cheap to me I absolutely hate that there's a nail polish in here in a slot I, I hate when palettes are made like this where everything kind of comes self-contained and it has pieces in it that don't you know stay in the palette they're meant to come out and then you just have this hole like how this palette's gonna look as soon as you don't have everything in here which why would you keep your nail polish by your eyeshadows I have no idea it then looks like half empty and used and gross I think personally like aesthetically it's not cute which I mean I think this whole thing is trying to be semi aesthetic you know like the whole Miss Dior stuff is supposed to be girly and pretty and I just think this is a disaster. There are so many ways I could spend $145 on makeup and enjoy it like tenfold, twentyfold. You know what I mean? I also hate that there's a lip product in here. It has the brush, which has the same kind of issues as the nail polish to me. So like, yeah, yikes to me. I just hate it. <laughs> I hate that. Another Valentine's Day release. This one's from Glamlight and this is in collaboration or like, I don't know, it's a kisses collection, I guess. And this had a bunch of mini palettes uh, and they're shaped like kisses. This is a no for me. I, I mean, I think that Glamlight has a great formula, but I am a little bit over monochromatic palettes, to be honest. The most exciting one to me is the brown one. There's, okay, let me see how many there are. There is the milk chocolate palette. That one's more neutral. That one's pretty. There is the milk chocolate with almonds palette, another neutral one, but it's like warmer browns. That one's pretty as well. Then there's the cookies and cream, which is blue. And these are all themed based off of the wrappers of the candy. There's a purple one called the special dark palette and then there's also a pink one and this one is called the lava cake palette i did not realize there was a lava cake chocolate kiss that's if anything it makes me want to go <laughs> try that maybe um but i don't know i'm not as drawn to i think um monochromatic palettes unless it's like a quad maybe because it's four shades i want to see multiple looks i can get out of one palette 
at, at the moment at least I feel like and um, yeah I also don't particularly love the shape like I think it's cute as hell I think it fits very glam light it's just not the product for me for sure I don't want to have a kisses packaged thing I think there's a lot of wasted space in there and um, it's just not something I'm gonna want to display like it's not a packaging that gets me so I, I'm not gonna pick that one up it's cute it's definitely themed I do feel like it's a good mix like glam light does you know the food stuff and whatnot but not for me that's for sure there is this bloom palette from clarity cosmetics I think this is really beautiful it's very dark like these are some saturated kind of moist looking foliage and and leaves you know and and flowers to me in this palette um, it has some really dark colorful mattes and it has some really beautiful corresponding shimmers I think it's pretty um, I don't think I'm gonna pick it up I thought it was kind of expensive maybe I don't remember why I, I decided I didn't want to more than anything I mean as much as I can appreciate this launch and this palette and the color story and stuff it's not perfect for me to go out and buy it but I thought it was really beautiful another kind of indie release this is from shroud cosmetics and there are four new matte eyeshadows now this because they're singles they have similar colors actually to the bloom palette they're these dark supple rich mattes and I do really like them I'm potentially gonna pick these ones up because I'd love to have some shroud singles in my collection you guys know I love to do things out and have them I'd love to incorporate them and some of these are some interesting maybe a little bit different colors for me so yeah and they're pretty affordable as well when I went on the website I think they're like yeah six dollars each so those are something I was eyeing I might pick up I might not I don't know but definitely one of the more tempting things out there for me right now a completely different look on this collection this is from M Cosmetics it's the masterpiece collection and this is very M Cosmetics I know this is different than other stuff they've come out with but honestly to me this looks very similar to what they've done. I want to see some new stuff. Like I want to see even just like single shadow pops of color that's still shimmery and light, maybe pastel for spring. I don't know. That's That would be fun and something a little bit different, but this is kind of the same, same we're getting. It looks beautiful. I could see a lot of people liking it. I know that people like neutrals. I like neutrals, but with M Cosmetics, something that's always kept me from buying is the price. They're just very expensive. These little eyeshadow palettes are $40 and I'm not, I don't know. I've never tried them. I don't know the quality, but it's just a hard pill to swallow. That's a hard price to swallow. The Heaven's Glow Radiant Veil is $34. It's just a lot. The full collection, if you wanted to buy it, would be 200 bucks. And I've just never been able to like get myself to do it. Even when they're on like sale for Black Friday and stuff, it's still really expensive. It's still like, you can have $5 off. I'm like, oh damn, that's... That's not the deal I'm looking for. Anyway, I think the thing that is most exciting to me from M Cosmetics, like if I were to spend some money, are still those like single shadows that are incredibly expensive as well. Um, but they're kind of like moussey texture. I kind of still want to try those. But anyway, it's it's okay. I think it's pretty, but I, I'm excited to see where they go after this. Like where can they go after this? They've done the peaches. Now they've done these kind of neutrals that kind of lean peachy. Where's next? I'm kind of curious. Some more Valentine's Day stuff. I'm telling you so much stuff. Next, we have a Beauty Bay palette. This is the Love Notes palette. I think this is an interesting take for Valentine's Day. It has the reds. It has the pinks, it has some purples, but there's something still kind of wearable about it as well. And I think that out of some of the different Valentine's Day collections I've seen, I think this one will be pretty wearable for the rest of the year for a lot of people. And so I think that's something good overall, you know? And they usually do something super saturated and super bold. They've done the greens, they've done the blues. So I think it fits with the rest of the line and different palettes maybe people have collected, but it's not for me for sure. Like this color story doesn't get me, it doesn't get me excited. I don't know if I would have liked it maybe it was more condensed down like a smaller more curated palette maybe half the shades I think that would have been more exciting for me personally there's some Charlotte Tilbury stuff these are just new lipsticks um, and I don't know they're all reds and pinks and I'm not really a lipstick girl like this so these don't really intrigue me ever um, but they don't especially intrigue me with the lips on them and you know for Valentine's Day so that's a no from me <laughs> what else oh this is a lip product uh, from Laneige they are doing a lip sleeping mask and chocolate specifically for Valentine's Day. Like it'd be so funny to buy all this Valentine's Day stuff. I don't know, do you buy a lot of the Valentine's Day stuff? Do you buy like one release? I don't know, do you gift maybe to your children or friends at at work or I don't, or just friends? I don't know, what do you do with the, all this Valentine's Day 
crap. Anyway, um, this is a chocolate one. I mean, I'm sure it tastes nice or like smells good on your lips, but I don't really want that, I don't think. Um, I wouldn't buy it just for Valentine's Day. If I was out of lip product and for some reason I could test the chocolate and knew I'd like it, maybe I'd pick it up, you know? Even Danessa Myricks, you guys, is getting in on that Valentine's Day stuff. It's a new Infinite Chrome Flakes, and this is the Kiss Me shade. It's pink and what you would expect for Valentine's Day, you know? Um, I still just not interested in the Chrome Flakes. I think they're too chunky. I like a chunky, pieced out sparkle, something flaky and textured, but the Chrome Flakes are, they're, they're even too much for me, man. Like, <laughs> I feel like everything I've seen on them, I'm just not sure I would love them. So I, I just leave them be and let them be these beautiful things that on social media look so amazing. Like you can make the most badass, awesome video from Duochromes. Anything Duochrome, whether it works and looks good on the eyes, whether it doesn't, whatever, like it looks beautiful. Come on, we can't deny. It. It's ripe for virality, honestly. A collection that I liked from Dose of Colors, like I was just excited, I think, to see something new from Dose of Colors. They're doing the Love Starts With You collection it has some heart-shaped cream blushes in stick form. Um, I think those are cute and again they go Valentine's Day but they don't have to be like they can just be cute little heart stick shaped things outside of that. There's also a quad. I thought the quad was really pretty and there's also some lip duos. I don't like the duos. I just think I don't know what it is probably just past associations but I just find those hated double-ended tube things to be cheap. I don't like it. So I don't love that, but I did think the eyeshadow palette was pretty, you know, and I liked again that it was a quad. It was kind of nice to see something small. I hope that Dose of Colors will come out with like a few more releases this year, maybe a cool palette, six pan, eight pan palette or something. That would be cool. There are some heart-shaped brushes from It Cosmetics. They come out of the woodwork every single Valentine's Day to give us these heart-shaped brushes. Now I know that people are obsessed with these, so I know some of you guys are gonna be really excited maybe to replace one you bought a few years ago or whatever, but yeah, man, the those brushes. <laughs> I don't know if It Cosmetics knew how much of a staple product those would be for their brand. I wanna talk about these perfumes really fast. There's some new ones from Tom Ford. These are the Private Rose Garden Collection and there's three different ones. They all seem to be based around roses and I'm not really a florals person so I don't think these would be for me. Also, I'm not a Tom Ford person. Like I have tried so many different Tom Ford fragrances thinking I'm gonna like them. I've tried so many you guys and man, I just don't really like the house. It's not my style at all. Ugh. I still smell them. Usually whenever I'm around it, I try to smell it again, see if like with more time or as things change, but yeah not really a house of perfume that I go to. Let's talk about a few more lip products. There are some new products from Sigma. These are the Hydro Melt Lip Masks. I actually got these in PR. I am a sucker for a lip mask, so there's always that, but I like the colors of them. I thought they were pretty, and um, yeah, I mean, if you needed a lip mask, I think they're pretty nice, but there's a lot of lip masks out there, and they all have this beautiful fantasy with them of these plush, plump, hydrated lips. You're the cool girl. You're gonna have that Instagram photo where you're in the natural light, and it's actually not showing your texture. It's just showing like the good stuff about you. Yeah, that's the fantasy I associate with lip balms. Like it's messed up over here. Okay. <laughs> what else? Some more lip products. Fenty is coming out with a Valentine's Day gloss in the shade Lavender Savage. And this is like a cool toned bubblegum baby pink. And I think it's a pretty color. I'm kind of over the gloss bombs. I mean, I think they're fine, but definitely not something that like gets me. These are starting to remind me of the buxom lip glosses for some reason, like the different shades that are coming out and kind of just how it is. I don't know. It's just what it reminds me of, especially too, with like the lip glosses every holiday and stuff. It's just like very similar to the the buxom lip glosses. I don't know why I'm like drawing that association, but I do. I wanted to talk about this other lip product though from Fenty. I did not expect them to come out with these again. I thought that it would not go well the first time, but obviously I'm just wrong as hell because they came out with more of these gloss bomb dip clip on, <laughs> dip clip on. <laughs> Sounds like I'm saying that. Okay, luminizer lip things. These are like clip on, like retro looking glosses. And these just seem like such a disaster for like actually using. Like the practicality of using these, you dip your finger in, you put your nail in, you bring a little spatula around with you, or do you just keep this at home? And if you do keep it at home, there's no reason for it to be clipping on to anything. You know what I mean? I think that this is definitely an example of like an accessory. To me, this just seems like an accessory. Like, sure, look cute with your bucket. It'd look good clipped to your like crossbody in a photo on 
Instagram, I guess, you know, <laughs> but the reality of using it is so different. Um, anyway, more Valentine's Day stuff. There are some Kaja uh, lip products. These just seem very Kaja, and I think that this is one of the best integrations of Valentine's Day stuff with a line and like a brand that I've seen. These are the Cuties with a K. Oh wait, Cuties, I think they call their Kaja people Cuties maybe with a K. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think these are actually the Love Swipe Lightweight Cushy Lip Mousses. <laughs> I think that they're that exact long name. And they are heart-shaped and there's a bunch of different colors and these are so cute. This is an example of like Kaja being at its cutest and I've kind of tried to write off Kaja because they get me with their gimmicky bull crap and their cute ass aesthetic. And I do think these are cute, but I'm not gonna get them. Not this time. I don't use lip products like that enough to get those. I don't Instagram flat lays enough to get those <laughs> also. <laughs> this is more of like a practical release from Melt Cosmetics. They came out with some different eyeliners, lots of different neutral shades, and I thought that was a good release from them. Something that I feel like will stay the test of time and could be useful to people, so um, I thought that was a good one. I was kind of interested in this skincare product, which I'm normally not, but this is from Summer Fridays, and that brand just sucks me in. I don't know what it is. The aesthetic of Summer Fridays. I want to be let into that club. But anyway, this is the Light Aura Vitamin C Peptide Eye Cream. It seems like it maybe has a bit of a tint or something to it though, so I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. I did just finish my uh, Belief Moisture Balm, which I love and I'm like tempted to repurchase. But if you've tried this, let me know your thoughts. Is it really moisturizing or is it not? Like, I'd love to know. I feel like I'm like going through these so fast, so I hope it's still entertaining, I don't know. Maybe I won't have to edit as much though. That'd be awesome, I'd really like that. I wanted to talk about this Shantikai. Shantikai, <laughs> I think this quad is boring as heck, but also beautiful. I'm not gonna get it because it's 74 fucking dollars. It's a lot of money, but I think it's really pretty. I do, like I think I would use it a lot if I happened to have it, but that's all I really had to say about that. Anastasia came out with some new lip liners. I actually picked up a couple of these a little while back. Ulta did 10 times the points on all lip products. And so I'm not gonna lie, I picked up a few different lip products and stocked up on those points y'all um, and so I decided to try a few of these out I don't have thoughts yet so I'll keep you posted but I actually picked those up I love that they were in wood pencil form and I just think it's a testament when brands that are kind of more focused on artistry which I consider Anastasia to be that way and also makeup by Mario both of them came out with lip liners more recently and both of them were in wooden pencils and I'm like yeah because they're the a new brand that I was peeping on Sephora, it's not as new again, I'm kind of behind and this is gonna be a long video, I already know it, but Callie Ray, I believe this was founded by the founder of uh, Urban Decay and I think that the brand has like a, a more youthful vibe to it. I'm kind of excited to try it, I'd love to know, are you interested in this brand? Do you want me to try some stuff? Have you tried some stuff? Let me know your thoughts if you have. But yeah, it's very like the beach version of the cool girl, you know, it's like Glossier meets a little more, yeah, Southern California vibes of like chill, you know what I mean? I almost got the mascara because it, the wand looked really great and something about it seemed exciting, but then I saw that it was a tubing mascara and that stopped me because I just don't know, I don't know if I want to do a tubing mascara, but if you've tried it, let me know. I don't know, it was like the first time in a really long time that I almost bought a full size freaking mascara in an expensive brand. I wanted to touch on this indie release because it's from Shine by SD and it's a collaboration. This is the As Above So Below collection and it's in collaboration with two different people on Instagram. It's a collaboration with M Jones 5018 or Monica and Bizarre Revolta or Lisa on Instagram. And I think this collection is really beautiful. I thought it was kind of fun that they each had their own six pan. I love that it was six pans and I know these are going to be sparkly and super duochromatic. Um, yeah, like I think it's a cool release. It's just very expensive. That's the only thing. It's very expensive. I know that Shine by SD shadows are and I do think that overall they're worth it in the sense that they are very special and they are very different than a lot of other stuff coming out even I think in single shadows. But yeah, it's a little bit of a steep price but I think anyone who does buy it is going to really like that stuff if you can if you can afford it. I wanted to touch on this Pixie collab collaboration um, with Hello Kitty. Uh, I just, I don't know what it is about Pixie. All their stuff just looks so boring every time. I don't know, it looks the same as other shit they've done and it always looks like so lackluster to me. I don't know what it is, but they that's their aesthetic to me, <laughs> just like lackluster. <laughs> I'm not excited about it. I'm not gonna pick it up, but I know people love Hello Kitty. I know, you know, that little Hello Kitty head on the bottle, that alone's gonna sell those for sure. But yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. I just always hope for like more saturation and I don't know if it's like maybe in person it is more saturated, but something about the photos, they just all look the same to me. I wanted to mention a foundation that I'm looking into maybe trying. This one is from Kosas and it is kind of the companion to their concealer, which I really like the concealer. So I'm excited for this launch. We'll see if I actually pick it up. I feel like there's quite a few foundations that have launched recently that I've been excited about. The Charlotte Tilbury one, the NARS one, now this one. So that's like three already this year. Year. And so I don't know which one I want to try. I've just been like holding off as long as I can just using what I have already But I think that's an exciting launch I'm excited to try it because I've tried the concealer and I think we're getting close to being done There's a few other things a new product from makeup revolution. These are the power shadow palettes Yeah, they're based off of I think different uh, Decades maybe or I don't really know dollar bills manifesto boo 90s baby These remind me of the urban decay ones that came out. Do you remember those because of the plaid one? But I feel like this is the better version of that because they're just cheaper. Like they're $10. I think Urban Decay was charging, you know, like at least double that for theirs. And I think they're similar color stories ish to me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't want to buy them myself, but they look just so similar, the same vibes, but cheaper, obviously. A lip product I actually really did like and was thinking about getting is from Makeup by Mario. It's the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. And these just looked supple and so nice like the lip mask version in a stick so it's like actually a little bit more wearable daily the matte packaging it just looks sleek but like modern I don't know I really liked it love the colors I was interested in this something about the swatches just look juicy and I've just been like growing more and more interested in makeup by Mario's brand um you know now that he's come out with a lot more releases and is kind of filling out his his line um I just think there's some like nice stuff in there so um I'm kind of interested in that I didn't buy it yet but I was keeping my eye out for it it. This is an old one, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. I don't care. This is from uh, Elf. It's the Cookies and Dreams collection. I almost said cream because, you know, it would make sense. But Cookies and Dreams. Um, and this is like a periwinkle blue and neutral palette. It has a lot of stuff in the collection. They did a similar thing to this last year with like the mint one. So this is just like the second ice cream themed beginning of the year kind of collection they've done. Um, I'm not really interested in buying anything. The one thing that sticks out the most to like potentially buy is the Chill zone uh, eyeshadow stick because it's like a periwinkle and so I think that is like a unique type of product and I like shadow sticks right now but I still don't think I'm gonna get it I just have to mention that <laughs> this scrubby lip product that's in here like the lip thing there's something about it the texture is intriguing the, it fits the theme but I don't know what it is the texture and the way this looks on this person's lips that just like it's not I don't know how to explain it. It just makes me uncomfortable. Like there's just, I just feel uncomfortable. Like my skin's crawling. I don't know how to explain why. I'd love to know if you agree or am I on my own trip with that one. There's still so much. Oh my gosh. Okay. I thought it was almost over, but I want to talk about this beauty blender because beauty blender constantly is putting out new crap. That's the same crap. It is the same thing, but it's new. It's marketed as new. Um, but this one actually seems to have maybe the tiniest bit of real world application to me. This is the color changing beauty blender. This is orange, but when it's wet, it looks yellow, I guess. And the thing I could see about this is like potentially just by looking visually, you could see how wet or not your sponge is, how dry or damp it is. And that could be useful. Like I could see that. I don't know why we have to imprint or, you know, cut into this sponge, the directions of wet me. Like, I think we all know how to use it. We don't need that, but yeah, just wanted to mention like for once, maybe something that, you you know, could have a practical application maybe, I don't know. There are some new matte eyeshadows from Charlotte Tilbury, the Matte Eyes to Mesmerize. It's so interesting, every time I do one of these and I'm so behind on the launches, it just reminds me of how fast everything goes because this is like old news, even though this post I'm looking at is from January 18th. It's not even that long ago, but this feels old to me. Like this feels so old. Anyway, they're all neutral colors. I think in theory, this could be good. I heard some bad stuff about them, but I think with potted ones, I tend to like uh, a shimmer, you know? I do like a cream shadow, but I love a shimmer. Um, and I do like the sticks maybe for some matte and it's just easy to apply. But yeah, I'm not gonna buy those. They're just so expensive and I don't need them. One of the last things actually for true this time. This 
is from Profusion. I wanted to touch on this because I thought this was so different for Profusion. I've never tried anything from them, but when I think of their eyeshadow palettes, which I've actually had really great things about, um, they always just look like kind of cheap in like plastic packaging and whatnot, and they are inexpensive, but I thought this was kind of fun that they did a more fully themed collection, and I thought that was really smart of them. I'm not saying I like the palette. Let's get into that. This is the Desert Sage palette. Color-wise, I, you know, it's kind of fun. It's like pastels for spring, and you know, you're thinking of those really colorful succulents you see on like Pinterest and stuff, as well as some greens. Like I think the color story is pretty, although quite large, um, but I really hate the pans. And I know so many people are probably gonna hate the pans. There might be a few of you who like it, but a lot of us probably are not gonna like the pans. It's just a lot of space and it's a lot, just a lot, you know? I get the theme, they went all in. I still don't like that part though. It's really affordable though, $13. I thought the little cactus, kind of cute if you needed one of those, I guess, but you know, it's also just like trash to me sometimes when I look at stuff like that. But yeah, kind of cool. I'm excited to see if they do more themed collections coming up, you know? And last, I'm just gonna talk about the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette because I did do a video on it. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave it linked down below. But I got this because I was excited for it. I liked the color story. Even looking at this picture, I feel like there's still so much potential and hope that could have been in this palette, but so far I'm just not impressed. Like, I don't think it's the worst thing. I really don't. I just was hoping it would be better. I really was hoping it would be better now that I like neutrals a little bit more. I felt like I kind of came in, you know, compromise, but I don't feel like they did. <laughs> With the formula and like the, I don't know. I just, mm. Yeah, I was hopeful, but unfortunately, I also like, I liked the outer packaging. I know that's been divisive. I liked the theming. I liked the way it looked, but it was so thin and it did feel pretty cheap. I feel like, again, for the price and everything. So yeah, kind of disappointing. But um, anyway, I've been here for forever. So I'm gonna leave it here. I'd love to know any of your guys' thoughts on these releases. What have you picked up? If you have any reviews, let us know down below. Besides what I mentioned in here, I really don't know what I'm gonna pick up. The most tempting thing probably are those shroud singles, but that's really it so far. Everything else is just like, meh. Okay. I mean, I've been really into perfume, so I feel like that's where I've been wanting to like maybe look at stuff more, but nothing too much getting me at the moment. Um, but I've been enjoying my collection still, so that's been fun. Uh, but anyway, okay, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.